Okay. Here in the book of Galatians chapter 5. And we're going to start at verse 13, right? And it read, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. All right, so right now we're in liberty, meaning that we're in times of repentance. Okay, so now this is what we should be doing. We should be returning back to our one and only true power, which is the Most High, keeping his laws, statutes, and commandments, right? Because we're not fully being judged by the law, okay? Because Hamashiach was already sent for that. You know, he was sacrificed at Calvary, okay? For the Most High to shed his blood, you know, to give us a clean slate to the Most High so we can continue to keep his laws and resort back to him. You know, return back to him. All right. So this is what this is. This is our liberty time. We're not fully being judged by the law, you know, you know, especially for the sins that's worthy of death, because we're not in our own homeland following our own government and rules. Right. So this is a time for liberty for us. OK, verse 14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. Right. Of course, you know, the even is written in italics. Right. So if you read it without the italics, it would say for all the law is fulfilled in one word in this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. OK, so, you know, if you're doing that with your fellow brethren and sister, not literally brother and sister, but, you know, the people of your nation, which is the so-called Negroes, Hispanics. Native Americans and Seminole Indians of Israelite Negroid descent, then you're fulfilling the law. You're rehearsing the righteous acts, right? Of course, you love yourself. So if you love your neighbor as you love yourself, you're not going to defraud your neighbor. Okay, you're not going to break any of the Most High's laws, statutes, and commandments towards your neighbor, right? You're not going to steer your neighbor astray. Okay, you're always going to give them truth. All right, even if it's in a playful manner, right? Verse 15, but if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed on one another. Okay, so, you know, you're not supposed to be at each other's necks. You're not supposed to be hating thy brother in thy heart. Okay. Verse 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay, so if you're walking in the spirit, then you're not going to fulfill that envy, that hatred, that jealousy that you may have for your brother. Okay, that covetousness, right? Verse 17, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other. Okay, so our flesh itself is sin. Okay. And our spirit always go against it. It's always contrary to one another. This as it's written in the uh, the Gospels, it says, you know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay, so there may be times that we may want to do things in the spirit, but our flesh is just holding us back. It's, it's our bonds, you know, it's our chains of darkness, right? So we always have to be in the spirit to give us that that oomph, which is the Holy Spirit, you know, to encourage ourselves to do things that we should. All right. Even what I'm doing right now, if I wasn't in the spirit, I wouldn't even be able to do this right now. I'm already going on like three hours already doing this right here. Right. And these things are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, Ye are not under the law. Okay, so if you're led through the Holy Spirit, then you're not under the law. Okay, because you're already keeping the law, right? Because the law, statute, and commandments is from the Most High. Where is the Holy Spirit from? The Most High. So if you're walking in the Most High's Holy Spirit, then you're not under the law. You're not going to be judged by the law because you're already keeping the law, right? Verse 19. 
And now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, unhappiness, laxiviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, okay, which is all associated with Halloween and Samhain, okay, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, okay, when you're, you're belittling someone, okay, you're being bigoted towards someone, you're disrespecting someone, you're slandering and backbiting someone, all right, that's what you call a reveler, all right, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told in past time, without the, the italics, with the U, right, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven, meaning that they're not going to be at rest, okay, they're going to be called the least in heaven, yeah, they're going to be in the kingdom, but they're not going to be where they should be, okay, they're not going to be reigning in the kingdom of heaven, they're not going to be successful in the kingdom of heaven, right? Verse 22, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, okay, <clears throat> meekness, temperance, Against such there is no law. So just like I said, if you're keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments through the Holy Spirit, then there is no law against you because you're already keeping the law, right? Verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections of lust. Okay, so basically, this is like I was saying before. You know, if... You sincerely call yourself a true follower of Hamashiach, right? If you sincerely call yourself a believer of the Bible, okay, you consider yourself holy, set apart, okay, holier than thou, as the so-called Christian loves to say, right, the churchgoer, and even as the sinners say in the book of Jeremiah, they consider themselves holier than thou, but they the biggest sinners in ancient Babylon, right? So if you consider yourself that, then you shouldn't be celebrating Halloween, okay? You know, stuff like that. You got to crucify the flesh. This is what we've done. You know, we crucified the flesh. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, we just became boring and we just don't like to do anything no more. All we do is just sit around and you know, read the scripture and stuff like that. No, that's not really true. You know, we have the Sabbath for that. But all throughout the week, which is a six-day week, you know, we do what we want to do. You know, just like I said, if there's there, there's no law, there's no sin. So, you know, we can do whatever we want to do. We can still enjoy ourselves. We can do whatever we choose to do as long as it's in righteousness, right? So, but, you know, the ways of the world... You know, which I'm trying to say is that, you know, we crucified in the flesh, right? We no longer keep Halloween. We no longer keep so-called Christmas, so-called Thanksgiving, right? Because none of those are biblical and it's not a part of our heritage. So, you know, us as a nation of people, we shouldn't be following the other nations, right? We shouldn't be keeping these vain customs, okay? So this is what the Most High is telling us through Hamashiach and Paul. You know, if you're going to crucify your flesh, which is your sinful flesh, your worldly flesh, then you're not going to be keeping so-called Samhain Halloween. Okay, you're going to be getting prepared for the Feast of Dedication. Okay, which is around Christmas, but it's not Christmas itself. <laughs> you know, Christmas is a whole different custom, a whole different celebration. There's no so-called Christmas in the Bible or Christ massacre, in which it really implies, right? But it's cut short for Chris mess, okay? So you got to crucify the flesh, man. If you want to call yourself a follower of Christ, you have to crucify the flesh, man. You got to live holy, which is simply keeping the law, statutes, the commandments to the Most High and spreading his truth with every given chance, man. That's it. That's all you got to do, right? But not even so-called Christians of today does that. But they want to call themselves holier than thou, right? Verse 24 again from the top. And they that are Christ 
have crucified the flesh with the affection and lust. Okay. Verse 25. If we live in the spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, let us also walk in spirit, meaning that through your works, people want to see your righteous works, your rehearsing of the righteous acts, the keeping of the law, statutes, and commandments, right? The wearing of fringes, okay? The keeping of the Sabbath, the keeping of the dietary law, okay? And encouraging others to do so, right? Verse 26, let us not be desirous of great vain of glory, Salakia, provoking one another and envying one another. All right. So when you're desirous of vain glory, you know, like the so-called celebrities are doing now, which is short for to celebrate, you know, to be a fanatic, of, which is idolatry. OK, you're desirous of vain glory. OK. And then when you provoke one another, you know, if you may be uh, with abundance, OK, if you may have certain possessions like, you know, a lengthy bank account or you may have a big house or whatever or an up to date new car, a fancy car, a luxury car. Right. And how you provoke someone with that is if you're going to stun on them. OK, you're going to show off on them. OK, or show out, so to speak. Right. You want to try to make this person jealous and envious of their so-called shortcomings or just because they may not have what you have at that present time. Right. So this is how you provoke one another. And this is what's being pushed in our society because it seemed like this is the only thing that these so-called celebrities are doing. Right. Every time you go on social media, every time you turn on your, your cable, that's all you see them doing. They flash in wads of cash. Right. They showing off their seven, eight bedroom houses. And for the most part, all of those things is not even theirs. You know, it's still on the corporate account. Right. But they're portraying to us like it's theirs. OK. And no matter what, it's still provoking a lot of people to envy and jealousy because a lot of people just don't understand that. They don't understand that for the most part, a lot of those possessions they have isn't really theirs. Right. Because a lot of celebrities who you may think that had a lot when they died, come to find out they really didn't have anything in the bank, right? They didn't have any possessions. The houses that they was living in wasn't even theirs. Okay. So, but still, you know, all in all, it's still a provoking of one another. And then you cause people to envy, right? And that's a sin to the most high. You know why? Because that's going to cause people to break the 10th commandment, right? Which is coveting. All right. You're not supposed to covet your neighbor's things. You're not supposed to covet your neighbor's wife. You're not supposed to covet your neighbor's possessions. OK, according to scripture, you're not supposed to covet your neighbor's house. OK, your neighbor's animals. OK, today that can be the cars. OK, you're not supposed to covet your neighbor's job. You're not supposed to covet your neighbor's personality. All right. The most high made you individually. He made us all different. OK. But when you want to provoke someone, these are the things that you do. And it's being egged on by the other nations of people because they understand that we're in sin when we're doing this. And this causes hate and strife amongst us. OK, but if you notice, they don't do that to each other. OK, you don't have the so-called Eastern Indian going provoking someone for jealousy. All right. You don't have the so-called asian provoking their people to jealousy all right you don't have the so-called caucasian man doing that you don't have the so-called hermetic african doing that or the so-called egyptian or the arabs right you don't have the so-called japanese why because they know that's going to cre uh, create so some sort of a hatred some sort of a jealousy envy strife amongst one another right so this is something that we have to learn. And the only way that we're going to learn this is if we read the scripture. OK, especially here in the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter. You know, we're not supposed to provoke each other to envy and jealousy. All right. So this is why the so-called celebrity is always getting robbed in the hood. They can't even go back to their own neighborhood. Why? Because when they get there, they want to show wads of cash. Right. They want to show off their their ring on every finger. 
okay? They want to get on social media and and uh, showcase this house that they have, right? And then they know they're not giving their tithing. They're not helping the less fortunate in the neighborhood, right? They're not helping the poor. They're not helping someone in hardship, okay? But they expect when they come back to the neighborhood to be shown all this love. And then they get the total opposite, right? They got a lot of so-called celebrities getting murked, getting deleted in the neighborhood because of this, right? Because they're provoking people to envy, all right? And then they're not giving back to the community as they should. You know, just like I said in a previous video, you know, if a lot of the celebrities within our nation of people was smart, if they was just right, and this not to insult them, but if if they was actually giving back to the community in the right way, I ain't talking about giving to some charity, you know, that claim to give back to the people. But then again, when you look around, you still see people homeless. You still see people getting evicted, getting kicked out. They don't have what they should have. Because a lot of those so-called charity organizations is pocketing the money, right? And a lot of those organizations are controlled and ran by those other people, if you know what I'm talking about, right? So the money isn't really going where it should. But if you give back to your own community the way you should, according to the scripture, all right, then you're going to have love in the hood. When you go back to the hood, you don't have to worry about getting robbed. You don't have to worry about getting deleted off, have your cap peeled back or whatever. Right. Why? Because you helping people out. You're doing good by the people in your neighborhood the way you're supposed to, which is originally your tithing. OK, according to scripture, your tithing is when you're helping the less fortunate. OK, you extending your hand according to their need. Right. That's your arms. That's your charity, which is your act of love. Your rehearsing of the righteous acts, your philanthropy. OK, so if the so-called celebrities was actually doing that. They don't have to worry about when they go back to the hood because the people of the hood is going to love them. They're going to say, oh, you know what? Now, nah, such and such, he helped me with my bill last month. You know, I had problems paying my light bill. I had problems paying my mortgage, my rent, my water bill. And such and such came back to the neighborhood and, and helped me out. So he's good when he's over here. When he come back to the neighborhood, nobody better mess with him because I'm going to be the one defending him. Right. He the one that helped me out out of my hardship. So he's good over here and I don't want to see nobody around here messing with him. Right. So this is what can happen in our neighborhoods with our celebrities if they were simply just giving their tithing and the rehearsing of the righteous acts by helping the less fortunate. Right. But what they do, they don't do that. And then they still think they are good in the hood. They still think they have love. And then when they come back to the hood, it's, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, just to keep it PG-13. So this is what this is all about, man. So this is why Paul, through the spirit of the Most High, the Holy Spirit tells us that we shouldn't be desired of vainglory, provoking each other to envy and jealousy, man. Right? Because this is what this calls. It leads to sin. Okay. So we're going to go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And I'm going to end that there. All right. Let me make sure that I'm in 10. All right. And we're going to start at verse 15. And it read, I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. Okay, so this is Paul speaking to us, the wise men. Who's the wise men? The one that loathes the laws, statutes, and commandments, right? <clears throat> Verse 16, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Hamashiach? The bread which we break. Is it not the communion of the body of Hamashiach? Verse 17. For we being many are one bread, meaning that we are on one accord, right? And one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. Okay, 18. Behold, Israel after the flesh. Now he's speaking to the people who's 
willful sinners, right? Salakia. The so-called two-thirds of our nation, right? Or not they which eat of the sacrifices, partake of the altar, okay? Which altar is this speaking about? This speaking about the altar of so-called Halloween, right? What say I then? That the idol is anything or that which is offered and sacrificed to idols is anything, right? So this is like I was saying before. You know what our nation of people, they think that celebrating so-called Halloween, a.k.a. Samhain, is a light banter thing to do. Oh, it's fun to do. It's fun to dress your children up in these costumes. It's fun to go door to door trick or treating, right? Eating all of this defiled candy, right? So this is what Paul is asking them. What say I then? The idol is anything offered in sacrifice to idols is anything, right? Verse 20. But I say. That the things which the Gentiles, okay, who's the Gentiles? Those are the other nations of people, right? Sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils, okay, demons, all right? The dead, the unclean spirits, right? The left side of the Most High and not to the Most High power, okay? So if you're keeping Halloween, a.k.a. Samhain, you're not doing this for the Most High. You're doing this for Samhain, right? And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils, okay? So we're not supposed to be even fellowshipping with these people who keep these customs, man, right? Verse 21. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Most High and the cup of devils, okay? And this, unfortunately, what a lot of our people are doing in the faith, right? They're claiming to have drink, with the Most High in Hamashiach, but at the same time, they're also fellowshipping with the occult, right? They're fellowshipping with devils, okay? They're laying to the people, deceiving the people, talking about how the Most High is blessing them, and only the Most High is blessing them, but behind closed doors, you know, secretly, they're tied to the occult. They're part of secret societies, secret organizations, receiving gifts from them for the seed the people misleading the people right bringing false prophecy to people right and it's all from the higher ups that's telling them to do these things right but they're deceiving you on their video talking about oh we're only serving the most high this is all we serve we don't serve satan we don't serve no devils over here we only serve the most high and then they show you all of the things that they have and you would normally think that those are blessings from the most high but actually it's gifts from satan it's from the occult that they're serving, that they're tied to. Okay, so they have a drinking at the table with the Most High and also a drinking at the cup of Satan. Okay, but that's unrealistic because you're not going to really have a drinking at the cup of the Most High because the Most High said, if you're not serving him and him only according to his first commandment, then you're not going to receive anything of the Lord, right? Just as James said, okay, you can't be a fence straddler, okay? You can't be a, um, a a double stalker, so to speak, right? So, blinded, okay, which I was trying to say, right? That's actually what's written in that scripture in the book of James. So, you know, this is what a lot of these people were doing, man, unfortunately. And it's a lot of people that you know, that's on YouTube, that you follow on a daily basis, all the time, Right? You may think that they don't have that partake with devils at the table, but they actually do, man, right? And me personally, I can name a few, right? But just to keep it peaceful, you know, you know, just to keep it, you know, uh, PG-13 also, and also don't bring, you know, no trouble and no reveling amongst brethren and sister, but they know who I'm talking about, right? But it's all good, you know what I'm saying? Because I have the spirit of discernment to know who's actually doing that and who's not right but the most high sees you so there's no need for me personally to expose you but you know who you are so this is what's going on but the reason why i'm bringing this out because they're deceiving the sheep okay people who sincerely looking to serve the most high right but they're deceiving and lying to these people like they're only serving the most high and all of the gifts that they have is coming from the most high only and it's really not man it's coming from Satan. It's coming from the occult, 
these secret societies, man. Right? So this is the reason why the Paul says this right here. Okay. Verse 21 again from the top. Ye cannot drink the cup of the most high power and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partake of the Lord's table. All right. Now, this isn't only for people that's of the faith. This is for everyone. All right. People you may know. Okay. People who you may not know that watch your channel. All right. It could be your so-called day ones. It could be your family members. Right. This is for everyone. You can't have that cup of the Lord and the cup of Satan. Okay. The rulers of this society. Okay. The slanderers of your brethren, the accusers of your brethren. Right. All because, you know, you're covetous. You know, you want the crumbs off the table. Okay. You want the so-called monopoly currency right which is not real money by the way and then of course that's going to be all extinct okay but you got people who's spewing false rhetoric and doctrine and regurgitating all of this nonsense talking about oh get all of your money out of the bank right but if you think about this what if this was to happen if money was to go extinct right and this right here is just basically common sense. You know, if money, which is the paper currency, was to go extinct, right? Why would you take all of your money out of the bank? And then you're not going to have any record of your money in the bank. So if money was to go extinct or, you know, non-usable anymore, then what record will you have of having any kind of money? You know, the only thing that you're going to have is the money that's in your hand, right? But that can come from anywhere. Like, you can complain to the, the bank owners or whatever that, hey, this was my money. I just took this money out. But during that time, money is going to be extinct. It's going to be non-usable. So people are just going to be just throwing their money in the street, right? Or they're just going to be trashing it. So anyone can go around and find a lot of cash anywhere because... That money is no longer usable. So, you know, in 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 an attempt to deceive the banks or whatever, or the financial institutions, you can go just to a guy and pick up a wad of cash and walk up in that bank and say, "Well, hey, look, this is my money right here. I always had it. I just took it out of the bank. What proof do you have that you took that money out of the bank? Okay, unless you have receipts or whatever. And if they choose to go buy that, then you might have your your uh, currency." you know, reinstilled back into your account. I guess whatever the currency that they're going to use, right? And which I highly doubt is going to be Bitcoin. Okay, but, you know, if you take all of your money out of the bank and then, you know, that currency goes non-existent, then what proof are you going to have that you actually had money in the bank, right? That money is going to be null and void. It's going to be no good. Anyone can pick up cash and say, I had this, I had that. But what proof are they going to have? right so the only proof is that you're going to have is the money that you have in the bank so when the bank decides to go to a different currency then that's your proof that you have in their bank okay i had four thousand dollars five thousand dollars in the bank okay so when that bank decides to go into a different currency here's my proof because my bank account is still in this bank so they can't say that i didn't have anything in that bank because i never took anything out so when they decide to move to a different currency, I six or seven thousand dollars in that bank. So the only thing they have to do is switch it from the paper money to the new currency that they're using, which is electronical funds, which they are speaking about today, right? So, you know, that's my whole take on it. So me personally, I would say I don't think people should take their money out of the bank. Now, if I'm obviously no. But you know, just off common sense and having some sort of a proof that you have money in a bank and that it can be switched over from paper currency to electronic funds, then I say you should keep it in the bank, you know? So, you know, you have a lot of people that's going around telling people that, and I don't think that's the right thing to do, or it might not be the intelligent thing to do, but me personally, I think you should keep it in, right? So that's what's being said here. which is 
spreading false doctrine and mass confusion amongst the people, right? Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of deceivers, demons, okay? Devils, liars, okay? False swearers, all right? False prophets, okay? That's your devils, man. All right? So I'm going to leave that there. I've spoken enough concerning Halloween and false prophets and false devils and witches and warlocks and wizards and Wiccans and all sorts of other things. Druids. <laughs> all right. So hopefully that this video was edifying. Hopefully that it was enjoyable. Hopefully that you got something from it. You know, once again, this is your brother, Yahweh Yasara, for the sea souls of Israel, the rocks of offense, and also the ambassadors of righteousness, the restorers of paths, and the repairs of the breach, and the advocates of Christ, dropping you another video. To the next time, I say, repent from celebrating Samhain, a.k.a. Halloween. Don't celebrate Thanksgiving, which is also known as Thanksgiving, and also forget about Xmas, which is also known as Christmas or Christ Massacre, right? All right, so the next time I say peace out, shalom.